In this lecture, I'm going to be talking a little bit about how the logarithm can be defined as an integral. So um, a definition that we can make of the natural log is that it is the function defined as ln of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt for x greater than 0. So how we can interpret this um, is different um, depending a little bit on the values of x, but here's the, the picture that we have in mind. So we have this curve um, y equals 1 over t, and we're looking at the area under the curve, say, from 1 to x. So if um, x is, in fact, greater than 1, then ln of x does represent the area under the curve. So under the curve, y equals 1 over t from t equals 1 to t equals x. And as we change where x is, um, the value of that area changes, and that corresponds to our value of um, the natural log at those different um, points. If we have x actually equal to 1, then we're looking at the natural log of 1, and it would be the integral from 1 to 1 of 1 over t dt. So using what we know about integrals, we know that would be 0. So this gives us another way of seeing that the natural log of 1 is equal to 0. If, um, in the third case here, so we know x has to be greater than 0 in all of these definitions. Um, if x is between 0 and 1, then let's see, what are we looking at? Well, we have the natural log of x is the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. But if we want the order of these to be um, so that the lower limit is uh, the smaller one, I would have to rewrite this as negative the integral from x to 1 of 1 over t dt. And so then the picture that I have in mind, I still have this curve, y equals 1 over t, but I'm going from x to 1. Okay, so the um, integral here from x to 1 is the area under um, y equals 1 over t, and that is a positive quantity, but I'm multiplying it by a negative. So this um, value, the value of the natural log when x is between 0 and 1, is going to be negative. So the, um, let's see, the natural log of x from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, or the natural log of x in this interval, can be thought of as the negative of the area under y equals 1 over t from x to 1. Okay, so this gives us another way of thinking about um, the natural log function instead of how we first defined it, which was just as the inverse of the exponential function. Um, by making this definition of the natural log, we can then define e as the function. So e is the number such that the natural log of e equals 1. Okay, so it's defined to be the number that makes the integral from 1 to e of 1 over t dt equal to 1. Okay, but we'll look at um, a few things that we can derive from um, this definition, including some of our log properties. Um, okay, but first we're going to look at how we can use this area definition to get an inequality and then use that information to show that 2, um, or that e is actually between 2 and 3. Okay, so we want to show using um, this definition of our logs. So remember the log function is defined as this integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt. So I want to use that definition to show that the natural log of 2 is smaller than 1, is smaller than the natural log of 3. So we're going to show this in two parts. We're going to show that the natural log of 2 is less than 1, and we're going to show that the natural log of 3 is greater than 1. Okay, so we'll show it in, two, in these two different pieces. So to start with, I'm going to show the natural log of 2 is less than 1. That's not too bad to show. So, whoops. remember using my definition here, the natural log of 2 is equal to the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over t dt. Okay, so I have this area here that represents the natural log of 2. If I draw a rectangular region here using the left endpoint, and I know that this curve is 1 over t, then the height here is 1, since I'm plugging 1 into 1 over t. 
So the area of that whole rectangle is 1, so I can see that the area under the curve is less than the area of that rectangle. So the natural log of 2 is definitely less than 1. So what about showing the natural log of 3 is greater than 1? So there's probably a few different ways to, to do this, but we're going to look at a method that's going to make use of Riemann's sums. So notice that my natural log function here is, or excuse me, not my natural log, um, the curve y equals 1 over t is decreasing. So if I use right endpoints um, of rectangles under this curve, then the areas of all of my rectangles will be a little bit smaller than the, than the area under um, the curve. So we're going to try to show that um, the area, um, let's see, using, we'll use n uh, equals 8 rectangles. and that will be less than the value of the natural log of 3. Okay, But we're going to want to show that this area is in fact greater than um, 1, so that'll show us that the natural log of 3 is greater than 1. So we're just going to uh, look at estimating this area using 8 rectangles. So that means that my delta x is 3 minus 1 over 8, so 2 over 8 or 1 fourth. So I would break this up into 8 pieces. Oops, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so this is going to be 5 fourths, and then we'll have 6 fourths, 7 fourths, 8 fourths would be 2, 9 fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, and then 12 fourths would be 3. Okay, and we're using the right endpoints, so I'll use all of those endpoints except 1. So my right Riemann sum with 8 rectangles, I'll try to draw a couple of these rectangles here so give us our our visual and see that we are getting an underestimate using this method. Okay, so all those rectangles are just a little bit above the curve. Okay, so our 8 here is going to be 1 fourth times my height at each of these right endpoints. Well, since my curve is 1 over t, then my height is going to be the reciprocal of all these different values. So I'll have 4 fifths plus 4 sixths plus 4 sevenths plus 1 half plus 4 ninths plus 4 tenths plus 4 elevenths plus 1 third. Okay, so that would be sort of time consuming to come up with a, a common denominator for. Um, so if we do this arithmetic, we're going to get one fourth times the sum of this is 28,271 over 27,720. So we can see that that number is clearly going to be bigger than one. So since we know that this um, area here is definitely less than the natural log of three, this shows us that the natural log of three is greater than one. Okay, so we're able to see using our um, definition here of the, the log as being this area under the curve that one is between the natural log of two and then the non and the natural log of three. And if we define e to be this inverse function, then we can see that e to the ln two is less than e to the one is less than e to the ln three. So in fact, two is less than e is less than three. Okay, so that's kind of a fun thing for us to show. So we want to look at a couple more things um, by taking this definition of our log here and um, combining it with the fundamental theorem to get um, one way of, of showing what the derivative of the natural log of x is. So if we have this definition, the natural log of x is equal to the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, then using the fundamental theorem, the derivative of the natural log of x Okay, well it's the derivative of this integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, which will just undo our integral, replace it with x, and we'll get 1 over x. So we see that the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, using the fundamental theorem together with this integral definition. So that's another way for us to show that um, derivative rule. So what we're going to do last is take a look at some of the log properties and see how we can use this definition and this derivative rule um, to prove some of those log properties that we've been using all semester. 
So we, these are our three log properties. So if x and y are positive numbers and r is a rational number, then we know that the natural log of the product of x and y is the natural log of x plus the natural log of y, and the log of x over y is the log of x minus the log of y, and the log of x to the r is r times ln x. So we're going to prove 1 and 3. Um, and I'll just note that you can see the proof of 2 in the text. The proof of 1 also appears, but the proof of 2 will use the proof of 1. So I think it'll be interesting for us to look at the proofs of 1 and 3. And I'll also make use of some things that we've learned earlier this semester. So we're going to show that um, the log of the product of two values is equal to the log of the first plus the log of the second. So this is going to make use of that derivative rule. It's going to use a little trick here. We're going to take a look at the function, the log of some constant a times x. So a greater than 0 is some kind of constant. And then using what we now know as our derivative rule together with the chain rule, we can say that f prime of x is 1 over ax times a which gives us 1 over x. So this means that oops, the log of x and this function f of x that we've defined have the same derivative. So we've seen that when two functions have the same derivative, that means they differ by a constant. So we can say that the log of ax equals the log of x plus c. So this is going to be a nice application of this fact that two functions that have the same derivative must just differ by a constant. Okay, so we have this. So this allows us to say that um, if in particular, oops, oops. okay, so if in particular we have x equal to 1, then we would have the natural log of a equals the natural log of 1 plus c. But we know the natural log of 1 is 0, so this is telling us the natural log of um, a is equal to c. So we can say that the natural log of ax is equal to the natural log of x plus the natural log of a. So this is pretty close to our rule. The last thing that we would do is just say replace a with any number y and we have the natural log of x times y equals the natural log of x plus the natural log of y, which is what we were trying to show. Okay, so uh, I mentioned that you can see the proof of the second law, that the, the log of um, x over y is equal to the natural log of x minus the natural log of y in the text, um, and it will also, in that proof, use this result here. Okay, so let's now just take a look at the proof of law 3. So we want to show that the log of x to the r equals r ln x. And so this is also going to use a trick of comparing derivatives. So we're going to first compute the derivative of the left hand side here. So find the derivative of x, um, excuse me, the log of x to the r. So using the um, derivative rule for the natural log of x together with the chain rule, we have 1 over x to the r times r x to the r minus 1 using our power rule. And then using exponent rules, we can simplify this a little bit because this is going to be r x to the r minus 1 times x to the negative r. Excuse me, and then we would add the exponents here. So this would be r minus 1 plus negative r, so that would just be negative 1. So this would simplify to r over x. So notice that the derivative of r ln x would be the uh, would have the same derivative. So we would have here r times 1 over x, r r over x. So since they're the same, then we know that the two functions here must differ by a constant. So we know that the natural log of x to the r has to be r ln x plus c. And that has to be true for all x for all positive x anyway. So in particular, it has to be true for um, x equal to 1. So if x equals 1, um, we can plug in 1, and that'll help us solve for what's, what c needs to be. So the uh, left-hand side here would be the natural log of 1 to the r, which would equal the natural log of 1, which would, would be 0. And the right-hand side would be r natural log of 1 plus c, which would be c. 
So this tells us that c has to be equal to zero. So this gives us our rule that the log of x to the r is in fact equal to r ln x. Okay, so this just allowed us to um, prove some of the, the properties of logs, give an alternate definition, practice with logs a little bit more, and um, as well as with some, some properties of derivatives. Um, you should take a look at the appendix. Um, make sure you um, are comfortable with all your log rules and exponential um, function rules, um, and let me know if you have any questions.